Okay, pacing, personal uh, favourite of mine. Um, I've done presentations with you, with you before talking about optimal pacing on races. Um, success really in hitting this, this uh, factor is about knowing your fitness and knowing the course profile that you've got ahead of you. And if you know those two, you can develop a strategy as to how you're going to distribute your race power over the course of that 10 mile or 25 mile time trial. It's, it's good to have that strategy because it's not about riding even effort, it's about going harder up the hills and easing back on the downhills, again because of the law of aerodynamics. Um, so it's good to know it, it's good to, good, good to have it there and thought about it before the race. But how are you going to practice this? An interesting development now, um, and I was talking to, to one of the riders out in New York about this, you can now ride um, a course, get that, domain, uh, get that terrain stored in your Garmin GPS system. There's now software that connects that um, via kind of like a Google Earth type interface. And it, through the software, it then creates the, the, the terrain you know, right through to you know, hills and, and everything you know, around you, creates a video. So you can be on your turbo trainer, on one of these virtual reality trainers. You can have that terrain around you. You can have the turbo trainer setting the resistance when the hill comes up. You're starting to get to the position where you could ride the National 10 course a month before, get it in your Garmin, go home, and you could practice your power distribution once a week so that you could be on the road, out on the course, and you could almost not have to have your eyes open. Um, of course, you're still looking ahead, but you might not have your eyes open. And you could actually be training very, very specifically for that event. Important to have the strategy. But how are you going to remember, uh, remember that strategy when you're out on the road? What are going to be your cues, your triggers? What are you going to think? You see the hill coming what is going to tell you what to do. Um, again, if you've not had a chance to practice the course on your virtual reality uh, tax machine, um, if you actually want to go outside and ride, that's fine as well. Um, but maybe it's about, I talked earlier on about having your, your race menu on the stem. Maybe you might need to have a, a slightly smaller piece of um, smaller writing so that you can also get in what power output you're going to use. You know, how much you're going to raise your, your power output up the first hill. <coughs> What would you use to, to get up the second hill? In small writing and good eyesight. Fifth one, cornering and technique. It's about knowing the course. It's about thinking, will the corners play a part in the result? And I wouldn't say that um, good cornering and good technique is going to win you a race, but it could lose you it. Ten watts is kind of typical training improvement over a year. Um, if you've been in the sport five or six years, you know, ten watts is something you'd still work really, really hard for. Train 15 hours a week to, to get. Um, might save you ten seconds depending on what speed you're travelling at. Um, you could lose a fair bit of time by um, getting getting a wrong corner or going so offline that you know you have to really, really break and then you lose that momentum and you've got to speed up again and then you lose some power that you could use later. Um, last year, when we, took the, when we had the National 10 on our home course here on the A3, we took the ladies out to practice the, the, um, the start because the start had, um, from about three, 300, 200 metres away from, from the start line, was the, the roundabout and um, David and I were there that morning and David stood on the junction on the roundabout and he, and he actually stood there so that the ladies could cycle straight towards David and practice practice to turn. And we did that three or four times, didn't we, David? We took, took, took the ladies through that first yeah. one. Mainly because it gave them confidence. They weren't then going to worry about that first corner because it's one of those turns where it's at the start of the race, you're a little bit jittery, you get it wrong, and it doesn't set you up in a very good mood for, for the rest of the race. So we did it, cracked it, and they all nailed it. Um, an even funnier example, 
was apparently we we created a few few um, heart in mouth moments on the the uh, five mile turn over the, the the flyover because all of the A3 CIG ladies were cycling in the dual carriageway. They did go on the slip road. They were cycling out the dual carriageway, and everyone was thinking they missed the turn. They missed the turn. So we're just going straight. But what they did last minute, they took the best line and swooped up around the bend. I'm saying it's it's not about winning races. It's about um, taking the seconds that are there to be taken. There's no excuse. You, you, you can be excellent in the technique. It's just about forethought and fore, fore planning. Um, look for the best line and commit to it. Ride the course before the race and try and do the corners at race speed. It's all very well to, to ride round and you know, just be familiar with the course, but it's another, another level of preparation to go round at, at race pace. Focus. How do you make sure you keep on the rivet? How do you make sure you keep focused enough to keep that intensity there rather than thinking, and I, 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 I was a devil for doing this, well if I maintain this current speed, I've got two miles to go, which I could do in two minutes and five seconds each, so therefore if I do that, what time I'm at now, hey that could be a new PB, and before you know it, your speed's dropped off and there's no way that you're going to do a two minute, five minute mile. Um, so keep focused on the job in hand. Um, Half of this room will be dissociators, the other half will be associators. And this is the way that we cue into our performance. Some of you will need distraction techniques. Some of you will think, oh my legs are hurting, okay, I'll count one, two, three, and you'll try not to think about your burning legs, the lactic acid build up. Um, some of you will want to associate with the pain because the pain will be telling you you're going hard enough. So work out what works best for you and use it to your advantage. It really does give you, does, does give you an edge. Paula, Paula Radcliffe um, was asked what she, what she does to get through that 18 to 20 mile um, region of a marathon which is known to be kind of do or die time. And she just counts. She just counts her steps, and I think she counts up, it's either to a hundred or a thousand. Um, bright girl, she's got a first in sports science, so she can, she can manage to, to, count, uh, <laughs> to count that high. Um, Graham O'Brien, known to do this as well, just counted in, in groups of ten. Um, so, in, in some ways that probably tells you maybe they're dissociators, um, although they might be thinking of the pedal strokes. <coughs> counting the pedal strokes as they feel the legs going round rather than just the, the, the action on the pedal. How many of you look at the weather forecast before a race? You might look what temperature it is, do you think about the wind direction? Okay. Atmospheric pressure is another important one. And not just looking at the, the weather and thinking, oh yeah, I'll wear my short sleeve skin suit tomorrow, that'd be nice. Um, it's about thinking, what equipment am I going to choose? Am I going to use my 808 deep rim or am I going to use my 404? The number of people that say, oh, it's too, windy to, use, it's, it's too windy to use an 808, and I turn around and say they're the best days to use it. Because people don't know what their equipment's meant to do. An 808 is designed to be, to be used in sidewinds. All right, so don't get scared to use this aerofoil technology on windy days. That's exactly when they're meant to be used. Tire pressures. I could probably guarantee most of you run too high a tyre pressure. You can never have it too high. <laughs> I was really shocked when I um, got my zip tubs last year and I looked at the instructions on the pack and um, for my body mass they were telling me to, to run at 108. It, incredible, you know. And it's being tested, you know, and I know, I know it's pump it up as hard as you can and it'll, you'll go faster. No, because all you do, you're just, you're just bouncing along the road if it's too hard. Use a softer pressure and it rides the bumps. So just have a, have a look and it will tell you the guidance on the tyres. It's not there for safety, it's science, it's science behind that, so have a look. Pacing strategy is another thing, headwind, tailwind. You know, think about this, if it's a course that's running uh, predominantly uh, east-west, 
and you know the wind direction, you should then be able to use it to your advantage. Don't fall, fall, fall for that talk in the HQ pre-race. Pre oh yeah, let, let, let the tailwind bring you back home. You know, it's, uh, um, it, it's, it, it, it's really, really interesting the way that people think about um, wind. It's not, it's not about um, going really, really hard with a tailwind. It's about going um, harder into a headwind. It's all about that speed minimisation. Race surface as well. Think about how bumpy the road is because that will affect things like tyre pressure and equipment choice as well.